it is Sunday night, and that means it's Sunday night service, and I am <laughs> so excited. I have got my true soul sister here. Yeah. I cannot believe it. <laughs> I met Dr. Isabel, I don't know, last month or something. I was on her podcast, and I just fell in love with her. She is absolutely one of my favorite people that I've met in a long time, maybe ever. So we are going Aww. to, be, oh, Dr. Isabel lives in New Zealand and we're going to talk about all this tonight. But guys, oh, look at that. as as you log on tonight, I want you to hit your heart buttons. I want you to tell us where you're from. I'm going to pull up my Facebook here. Tell us where you're from. Post your questions up, whatever it is. We're going to talk about a lot of things tonight. We're going to talk about anxiety, depression. We're going to talk about all kinds of things. So um, as we get started here, let me read. Sorry, I was trying to find my Facebook page, but I'll do it whenever Dr. Isabel's talking. I'm thrilled to death to have her here. By the way, guys, she lives in New Zealand. She's not in the United States. And look how beautiful she is. Oh, my Lord. Let me tell you a little bit about her, though. She's she's a Cuban American. And you've got your birth date on here, but and I can't believe it. 1959. Look at her. Yeah, she was yeah, born in Washington. <laughs> she was born in DC, but you know, she doesn't tell everybody her birth year, but we're kind of, <laughs> we're kind of soul sisters over here. And if you're in, if I'm in her tribe, then you're in her tribe. So you've got her birthday. All right. Listen though. She's been a doctor since 1991. She's an MD. And the only reason that she went into the medical field was that she wanted to help people. She wanted to get to the root of disease, the root cause, which she wasn't taught in school, by the way, um, and not just put a Band-Aid on it. Her patients weren't getting any better. They were really just existing. And her goal was to see people healed. She decided to become a doctor because she had uh, at age five because her uncle, her uncle Julio Perez, is that right? Yeah. He's an anesthesiologist and she was uh, just in love with him. And when he walked into the room, his smile, his positive attitude would just light up the room and his patients' lives. And he would make his patients feel happy and they would start smiling. At five years old, she decided. Well, she said to her mother, I want to be a doctor like Tio Julito. Okay, there we go. That's how you say <laughs> Uncle Julio in Spanish. All right. In 2000, she and her husband, which is fantastic, y'all are going to hear about him tonight, and their two young daughters, they picked up and moved from Colorado, correct, mm -hmm, to yes. New Zealand to experience a different culture and a different part of the world. And it's November 21st, 2021, and they're still living in New Zealand. They had never been there. They didn't even know exactly where it was on the map, <laughs> but there they were. And, you know, what a life-changing experience it was for you all. You've been there 21 years. That's yeah. incredible. So after 20 years of being a medical doctor, the last 10 years, she's been studying functional medicine. Yes, me too. 10 years, 11 years ago, started studying it. And, and she, which of course we know, focuses on the root of chronic illness and its treatments. Her husband is a culinary nutrition expert, Chef Michael, and they created the brand Doctor on a Mission, which I have, uh, no, I'll, I'll share that in a minute. Doctor on a Mission, where they uh, prevent and reverse disease and give others hope. Their expertise is in Alzheimer's, dementia, cognitive decline, anxiety, depression, and diabetes. They've been doing telemedicine for the past seven years with an online business, um, the online business of Doctor on the, Mo on the Move. Doctors on a Mission, good Lord, where they <laughs> offer online courses and one-on-one -on -one coaching. So all that being said, they're walking together in this journey and they're getting ready. She's getting ready to talk to us about her journey, her mm -hmm. journey of hope and healing, her journey of overcoming depression, anxiety, and lots of other things that I'm actually going to let her tell you about. So welcome, Dr. Isabel. I'm so excited tonight. Please, Danny, call me Isabel, okay? Oh, no, but okay. Yes, 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 doc. Okay. 
if I, I was a doctor, I would want to be called Dr. Isabel. I mean, well, yes, I would be honored to be called Dr. Isabel, but I would love to be, I would, but I'll call you, I'll call you Isabel. Thank All right. You. Tell us, my friend, what happened to you? What happened to me? Well, first of all, I thank you so much for inviting me to your beautiful Sunday night service. And I really, I really wish we lived next door to each other. I do too, because we, <laughs> we are helping change the world, but we could really do some things. Couldn't we together? Well, yeah, well, we are, we are doing it together. Yes, ma'am. We are. So yes, give us a little scoop. Okay, so what happened to you seven years ago? So what seven happened? well in 2013, I gave away private practice here in New Zealand. Um, because what I realized was that we don't have a healthcare system, we've got disease management, even in New Zealand. And like you had said, I'd been studying functional medicine since 2000 when I came here. And, and um I remember in 2013, I said to my husband, Babe, I really just want to do more. I want to, you know, Mark Hyman, Dr. Mark Hyman was on telemedicine, doing functional medicine. And I was like, that's the way I want to do medicine is reach the world, you know, and help heal yeah. more and more people just like you, just like you're doing, Danny. And then in 2013, I gave away private practice and I was a wife, a mother, a doctor, and a new brand new entrepreneur, something that I had never learned in medical school. Did you learn this in medical school? No, no, never. No. no. <laughs> Actually, well, I wasn't in medical school. Remember, I was in nurse practitioner school, but I did not learn anything about business, running a business, or actual root cause medicine, right? I know. Not a thing. And hopefully your son is learning all that now. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. First semester. Woo! Okay. Yeah. Tell us. Remind him that I'm here for him. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay, because that's a rough time. Um, <clears throat> then in 2014, I was 54 years young. Um, and I just was very, very anxious. And because things weren't going well. I mean, I'm the type of person that likes to get things done and just on to the next level. Bing, bang, bring, ding. I'm the kind of person that wanted to do medical school not in 12 years. I wanted to do all the training and be done in like two years. You know, like, yes, why, yes. why do we have to do pre-med medical school and all the education? Let's just condense it and do it and do it two years. But that's not the way it was. So in 2014, I was, I went through 17 nights of only sleeping two to three hours every single night. Um, and by the end of that time, my husband had no clue what was going on with me. Um, I was very careful not to show my cards to anybody. But by the end of those 17 nights, I tried to take my life twice in three days. And by the grace of God, that plan was interrupted by my daughter. And she didn't even know that she was interrupting it. But my husband, I... I came rushing into the bedroom and um, told him what was happening. It was like three o'clock in the morning. And, uh, and he just held me for three hours until six when, and then he called our pastor in the morning. And then he scooped me up and took me over to our pastors and we talked and we prayed and, oh my gosh, I thought I was healed. You know, I thought, yes, I'm done. Everything's taken care of, but no, there was more work to be done. And so he, we decided that I'd go see my doctor. And my doctor said, no, you need to see the psychiatrist. And as a medical doctor, having to see a psychiatrist, that's like bad doo-doo. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just taboo. A medical that's doctor right. does not see a psychiatrist for healthcare. That's and right. and the, the psychiatrist saw me and he said, Isabel, um, I'm going to give you medicine to help you sleep, which I'm so grateful. He put me to sleep for two weeks. I needed to sleep so badly. And he said, and you're going to be on this antidepressant for the rest of your life. Wow. And look, at that point in my life, I totally surrendered. I was obedient. I just wanted to get better. But deep down inside, I said to myself, yeah, we'll see about that. Because that's just the way I am. That's right. That's <laughs> like, right. Uh, because I know functional medicine, I know that there's more to this story and I'm going to figure it out. Right. 
And so I stayed on the antidepressant. I took my sleeping tablets. I slept. I got better. And then I went on a five-year journey. I call it my five-year winter. I do not like winter, anybody, except unless I am skiing and powder snow. And then get me out of my powder, out of my skiing gear and into my bathing suit because I do not like winter. It was a five-year winter, but during that five-year winter, um, I made a lot of mistakes. Uh, I learned a lot, spent lots of money on that personal journey of learning what's going on. And now I'm over on the other side with my husband. We're still married. I mean, marriage dissolves with anxiety and depression. And we've yes. grown. I'm off my antidepressants. I'm off the sleeping tablets. I know how to do it with nutraceuticals, with hormones, with eating, with sleeping, with detoxification, all the stuff you and I have learned, but is not being taught. And now we're over on the other side and we're like, wow, we got to tell the world about yes. this. Yes. And so yes. that's why I'm here with you. Oh my gosh. And so you got through it by healing. I mean, you already probably had a good gut and all you got through it. You worked through your trauma. Did you have adverse childhood experiences? I mean, was there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea about adverse childhood experiences. I yeah. mean, we're not taught this stuff in training, yep. are we? Never. It was it was three years ago before I ever really knew about adverse childhood experiences. And a, a patient of mine came on and did a Sunday night service with me about this. He said, yeah. you're missing it. You're missing it, Danny. And I I am irritated, mad and all the things that I did. I missed seven or eight years worth of practice with patients not identifying the childhood trauma, the toxic stress that happens to us before the age of 18. Now there's medical trauma also, but this is specific childhood trauma that I'm talking about. Yeah. Uh, and, and me too. And I had no idea. I thought that's just over. You know, I'm the type of person like, nah, I, I don't get affected by that. But you know what? Your limbic system, as you know, does not forget. Keeps score, doesn't it? The it body keeps, keeps the score. score. Yeah. And so when I learned about adverse childhood experiences and how I was staying stuck in that story of fear, because I grew up with, uh, I mean, my family, I love my family, but they were messed up. My father was an alcoholic Cuban. Remember Ricky Ricardo and I Love Lucy? Oh, gosh, yes. I, uh, I love Lucy. <laughs> I, got I love Lucy, too. But my father was Ricky Ricardo, alcohol. Oh. Like, everybody loved Ricky, right? Everybody loved Lick Ricky at the cabana. But behind closed doors, my father was the alcoholic Ricky. And God rest his soul. He's gone now. I hope he's in God's hands. But, you know, I don't know. He always fought that whole battle and I have forgiven him, but daddy was, it was scary being around an alcoholic and uh, you know, a Cuban alcoholic, any alcoholic is scary, but a Cuban alcoholic is super scary with the veins sticking out and walking on eggshells and stuff. So when I learned about ACE and if there's anybody out there that doesn't know your ACE score, you can Google ACE score, your adverse childhood experience and get your score. I did that. And mine was, um, four plus, and I know yours was pretty high too, six. Danny. Six. Yeah, six. And we, anybody over um, four has an increased risk of suicide by 1200%. 1200%? Are you joking me? Do you know how many people are medicated solely on the fact that they're suicidal, but nobody's talking about, hey, let's repair your brain? That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Um, I just posted the link up to you can take your adverse childhood experience score or test online on the NPR actual page, um, National Public Radio page. Yeah. They have an excellent, um, I mean, it's the same test, but they just have a great way to do it. So, okay, keep talking about this, my friend. So, so then, um, you know, that, that saying when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Yes. Yes. Well, then, then the teacher appeared in my life and her name was Annie Hopper. And I was listening to her being interviewed by um, somebody on functional medicine podcast. And Annie had figured out how to help people repair their, their past, 
you know, it's a long yes. process. I know you did EMDR. I did EMDR and I went to on site, which is here in the States. And it's a, I was there for six days working on about 12 hours a day of experiential therapy. So, mm -hmm. you know, acting out your original trauma, which was, well, was being molested. Actually, the original mm -hmm. trauma was six weeks when my mom went into postpartum psychosis and was let, was institutionalized. But yes, so I've done a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work around this the last three years. And it's so freeing. And it's so freeing. It so, uh, so, bet. oh yeah, it's so worth it, but it's the hardest work besides giving birth. It's the hardest work. <laughs> Besides being pregnant and giving birth all in the same year, it's the hardest work I've ever done. And um, so Annie Hopper has got this program that you can do online because I'm in New Zealand. I can't be flying back to America and spending thousands of dollars and all this time. So she's got an online course that's six weeks, but then you implement it for at least a year. And it's an every day. It's an hour process every day that helps re re program or re, re reprogram your brain and get you unstuck, you know, get your amygdala forgetting that and replacing it with positive thoughts. And so now I don't have to do that work, but I did it for a year and not everybody can do that, but I just wanted to get better. I'm like a dog on a bone. When I want something, I want it and I'm going to do whatever I got to do. Absolutely. I hear you. Yeah. So, so you overcame it. You got through it. You're a believer. You know, you, you did the work. You had hope, but hope needs a strategy as well. I'm a big yeah. believer in that. And yeah. let's see, how old were you then? Wait, this was. Today. So I was so, 54 when it happened. So and you then, were menopausal? Yes. You had already gone through menopause? I was going through. I was just in my first. I was. I was just a menopausal. I was perimenopausal, menopausal. And that's another thing. Uh-huh. That's another thing. I, you know, I, just so you guys understand, I was taking my antidepressants, taking my sleeping tablets, but I was still the doctor. I was still, I was actually still seeing patients. I was doing locum work. And the more I talked to women, the more they were like, yeah, I just sleep three or four hours. That's all I need. And I was like, no. And they kept on wanting sleeping tablets. And you and I both know that sleeping tablets aren't, isn't the answer, right? And so the more I talked to more and more women, the more they just said, yeah, this is just the way it is. And I was like, I know this is not the way it is. So then that led me to the next part of my journey. And that is bioidentical hormones, yes. which I learned through the Institute of Functional Medicine. Like this, it's, it's such intense training, but we're not taught how to understand bioidentical hormone in medical school and in nurse practitioner. You guys taught that? No, absolutely not. In fact, I was given a handout by the department. Well, not the department chair, but um, one of the instructors on the dangers and the hocus pocus of bioidentical hormones, the dangers. So they expected us to use horse urine if we were going to do anything. But really, women didn't need hormones. That's pretty much what I was taught. Oh, my gosh. That just, you know, and that's what yeah. I was taught. And so the more I learned about bioidentical hormones and the more I implemented it on myself, I was like, my brain just started waking up. It was like fire. It was like the light bulb started, you know, I was like, and then I did a Dutch test on myself and it, I was flat estrogen, flat testosterone, flat progesterone. But I was like, I had no idea that this was going on. And then as I got help getting bioidentical hormones on board, Oh my gosh. I just, I can't imagine life without this. Isn't that something? Yes. I started bioidentical hormones. I started progesterone and a little oh. bit of testosterone at, in my forties, later 40, 45, 46, no estrogen until I went through menopause. I can't imagine not going through menopause, not being postmenopausal without bioidentical hormones. And I, I, you know, your brain, you and I are passionate about dementia and Alzheimer's and cognitive decline. How many, how many pathways to estrogen? How many functions does estrogen have in your body? I don't know. Hundreds. Yeah. A lot. A lot. And when your estrogen is 
five years. I cannot stay on them any longer than five years. I'm like, what? I'm going to die with biased in one hand, progesterone and testosterone in the other. And you can just end low dose naltrexone on my chest. You're going to have me in the casket holding my hormones because I'm not ever going off of them. And yeah. so, but all that being said, um, you know, people say, oh, estrogen, it's going to cause cancer as well. If estrogen was the the cancer causer, then the 20 year olds and the 25 year olds with the perky boobs up to their chin and the beautiful skin, nobody's sagging, they would all have breast cancer. So it's not estrogen that's causing. I mean, you can have an estrogen based cancer. I understand that. So I am a big believer in hormones. So hormones turned everything or turned a lot around for you. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I just was like, wow. And now I'm working with women and just doing yes. the Dutch test and getting things checked and doing things correctly because you've got to make sure. I mean, it's kind of like when you practice bioidentical hormones, it's kind of like you have a bullseye on your back, you know, you waiting bet. waiting for somebody to just get you. So you've got to do it the right way. You've got to make sure you've got breast, exam, you know, thermography or mammogram, your smear, you all bet. that stuff. And you got to get your hormones checked and all that stuff and consent form. It's not just like, oh, just get it. But, you know, when, G when people, when I send my patients to go see their GPs or family practice. I just say, look, just ask your doctor to put you on the estradiol patch and the eutrogestin, which is in New Zealand and Australia, it's the micronized progesterone. And um, I'm essentially teaching the doctors through the patients on how to do that. And, um, and it's working and it's subsidized here in New Zealand and Australia, it's a subsidized thing. Really? You know, every, everybody gets healthcare and you've got, you, you pay a certain amount of money for, for supplements. So, I mean, not supplements, but for medication. So hormones are huge. And when I, as you know, anxiety and depression increases our risk of Alzheimer's. You bet. And so I'm rabid about teaching people to get your anxiety and depression under control now so that you're not at increased risk. I think it's like a two to three times increased risk of anxiety and depression. And if you look at, I mean, of Alzheimer's, and if you look at, um, Alzheimer patients, two thirds of them are women. You bet they are. You and a lot bet. of it's got with, to do with hormones and toxins and stuff. So absolutely. It's huge. This is huge. So you're, so you're in a good place. You're in a good place mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. How do you yeah. keep it? How do you keep it that way? How do you stay? In How a good do I place? stay? I, 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 mean, I think that's key. I work at it every day. You bet. Me every too. every day. And I just wanted to say before you said, oh, I'm sure your gut health was fine. No, my gut health was not fine. I was eating gluten and dairy and sugar and drinking wine. So, you know, no, I wasn't your your uh, perfect functional medicine doctor. I don't think there is a perfect functional medicine oh, practitioner. No, <laughs> I think there, we're all there is only one perfect functional medicine practitioner and it's not you or me or you know it's the guy up there and so it's it's not, he was a true functional medicine practitioner yeah yeah hey right. i just i wanted to answer your question about how i stay away from that yes. um from the buffet well i thought that it was be the reason i tried to take my life is because i wasn't close enough to god and that was kind of the message, you know, a little bit of a message that I got from the church. And I want for everybody to know that um, you don't try and take your life because you're not close to God. You, you try and take your life because you're in such a deep, dark hole. And there's like a lot of reasons why that can happen. Um, for me, I have the personality where I try to take everything on board and do it on my own. I, I used to have a very prideful personality where I, it was all on me. I was the only one that I was able to do it. So now during this journey, I've, I'm like super glued to God and super glued to Jesus and super glued to the Holy Spirit and understand that I can do it with them, you know, that they're leading. In Matthew, I read this morning, I forgot where it was. I think Matthew 11, 25, 26 about Jesus talking about my yoke is light and stuff. And I looked up what a yoke was really, you know, it's not like an egg yoke. This is different. This is like when you see two ox, oxens together, they've got that thing up the top and right. the, it helps, it helps equilibrate 
the 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 chore, but there's always one ahead that oh there's always one on the yoke that's the leader. And so oh. and so that helped me understand Jesus is the leader. Just know that he's with you and he's with you during that journey. And so I'm grateful that this all happened to me because I never have had such an intimate close relationship with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I mean it's just made me closer to them. So I don't want anybody to think that this happens because you're not close to God. It's just this event will help you get closer. Oh, that's a great idea. You bet. I was typing that in while you were. I just thought about that because if anybody is in crisis tonight or at any point, there, mm. take a picture of that and put that in your phone. You can call the suicide crisis line. Now, this isn't in, in the United States certainly. Uh, but, you know, we're coming up on the holidays. Thanksgiving is coming up, Christmas, New Year's. It's a it's a hard time for a lot of people, whether their hormones are balanced or not, whether they have a family or not. Many people struggle during this time of year. So if you if you have any struggles at all, the text line is fantastic. I mean, somebody immediately gets back to you. I mean, the suicide crisis line as well. So always have that on hand and always pay attention to your friends and your coworkers because you may be the only one who looks at Dr. Isabel and says, are you thinking about killing yourself? Pay attention to how they are. Be the one who asks the hard questions. And don't be afraid to ask the hard questions. That's right. That's right. And you just may save someone's life. Because people, I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you because both Danny and I know, we know how to hide it. Oh, We're, nobody we, has, that's right. Nobody we, had any idea you were getting ready to take your life. No one knew I was getting ready to drive off the foot of Broadway in Paducah, Kentucky into that Ohio River as fast as I could. And I knew no one would be able to get me out of there because I know how that current goes. I sat down there two weeks ago and watched it and had some flashbacks of what I was going to do. And I am so grateful. My kids walked into the room and got me out of that bed. Thank you. Thank you. I Lord. knew what I was doing that day. And your kids knew, I mean, you, you knew what you were going to do that day as well. So I, 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 no one knew. I've had so many people read the book and read the story that knew me and my past life back in Kentucky. And um, they said, Danny, we had no idea. I said, yes. Well, why would you? People who are going to do that oftentimes never give you a sign. Right. I'm just oh, grateful to God, grateful to God that I am me here too. to my kids <laughs> who came jumping in saying, mama, mama, get up, get up. Let's eat. And I mean, I probably fed him something awful like Captain Crunch. Who knows? But whatever. <laughs> it saved my life that day. And the second I saw their little eyeballs, I was like, oh, Lord, no, I'm not leaving these people with my husband. And um, and there you go. So, you know, wow. so, OK, so hormones. I mean, you know, you are such a warrior for women, men as well, though, you know, um, I mean, but mainly for women and for people in the medical field to see your vulnerability, mm. I just find that so um, heartwarming. And and I mean, to be vulnerable is hard. But when you share your story, you start to heal others, don't you? Yes. And that's the coolness about this. Like, I feel like God is used what was meant for my harm. God's using it for the good of others. And gosh, I would, I, that's what I want to be used. I want to be used by God to help heal the world because it's a terrible thing. And I'm not the only one that's going through it. That's so, right. So tell these people, because we're in the United States and you have a private community, which I need to share. You have a private community on Facebook, yes. right? Right. Tell right. them about what you're doing. Tell sure. them about what you're doing. Um, right. and so, you and your husband, Chef Michael, whom I adore. I know. Uh, me. I <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Tell them about this community because people heal. Everyone knows that's my sixth step to healing. Cultivate community. People yeah. heal when they have community. Absolutely. So right? yeah. I, the, so the group is called and it's free 
and private for women. It's called the Shame Free Anxiety and Depression Community for Women. And the reason Michael and I started it is because Michael walked alongside me during this whole process. And he, I mean, he fed me. He, he was the chef that cooked for me. I'm a good cleaner upper, but he fed me. And we both know, Danny and I both know that nutrition is like number one, food is medicine. And Michael, Chef Michael teaches food is medicine or food is poison. So it's this community. We, got, we teach on it every month, every week. And it's just demystifying, detabooing, if that's a word, just, well, it is in my dictionary, detabooing is a new dictionary word. I and it's it. just, I love it. I'm tired of us not talking about anxiety and depression. And I just don't think that um, it's addressed correctly. It's addressed enough. And for us to realize that it's not, we're, it's not mental illness, it's brain unwellness. It's all got to do with our brain. And we just got to learn, be taught like children, how to take care of our brain with the way we eat, sleep, think, talk, exercise, have relationships, our stress responses, toxins. Oh my gosh, I've got like 14 you know, cracks in our foundation that could be causing anxiety and depression just from my journey. So, yes. yes. So I just, I, I don't, you know, yes, I'm, I'm, um, I'm very vulnerable, but also I just feel so strong because I'm look, Danny, I'm over on the other side and I know how to stay away from it. And that's what I'm teaching is let's, let's learn how to get over to the other side, the new you, your new story, so that you don't have to be in that place anymore. Because that's not where you're supposed to live the rest of your life. That's exactly right. Now, do you work with, do you work with patients in the United States? Are you working with? Um. Yeah, well, we, yeah, well, I'm telemedicine. That's all I do is I do yes. telemedicine with people. Yes. So what website can they go to? to check you out. <clears throat> they can go to doctoronamission.com, D-O-C-T-O-R on a mission.com. And there's lots of freebies there and they can send me messages on the shame-free anxiety and depression community. Yes. You all have joined her shame-free and shame-free <laughs> anxiety and depression community. Gee whiz. Um, uh, because it's really great. I've been reading through. I watched her Facebook Live right before this. Um, there it is, DrOnAMission.com. That website is fantastic. She has so many beautiful things on there. The coloring is beautiful. I mean, that what you've done is gorgeous on that website and lots of great free content and education for you all. So definitely. I, okay, what else? Is there anything else that you want to share with these women? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How long do we have? <laughs> well, we've got whatever time you need, my friend. Well, you had asked me, what do I do? Well, I, I work at this every single day. But, you know, as a habit, when things become a habit, it's easier. So what do I do every day? Yes. My attempt is to get seven to eight hours of sleep throughout the night. Does that always happen? No, because I wake up and I think. And, yes. I, it, you know, we're all we're all... We all got stuff. And we, so now I've learned that when I do wake up and I'm thinking, I know how to think correctly. I don't think negatively. I think correctly, productively and moving forward thoughts. Yes. And then I wake up in the morning and I, I always have to have my war room time with God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So that's like a must for me. That's my medicine in the morning. And then I exercise and um, I eat well. Uh I take time out for myself. I don't stress myself like I used to. I always felt like I always had to do everything all the time. And if I wasn't working, I wasn't worthwhile living here on this earth. That is just such a, I don't know what it is where I got that, but it just happened. Um, so I just give myself time for breaks and um, I make sure that I'm reading positive things. I'm learning positive things, things that are going to help me and help others. I don't watch the news for maybe I watch maybe five minutes a week just because it's not good for my brain. I get sick when I see how sick and mean people are in this world. Um, and yes. uh, I just connect with people that, that help me. Amen. And I, yeah. And I keep people close and I just, uh, I'm on a mission with my husband and Danny and others that just want to help make healthcare 
it's a daily Healing. that's right it's a daily journey isn't it i mean and mm -hmm. and some days you're better than others some it's just like eating you know we're right here at the holidays ladies give yourself some grace give yes. yourself some grace you know i'm trying to you know cook as healthy as i can for for the holidays but give yourself some grace don't don't beat yourself up if you you know go off the wagon on thanksgiving with your people just get back on don't beat yourself up if you don't exercise today just exercise tomorrow if you can't do you know don't beat yourself up i think we're so hard on ourselves and that just breeds i mean just it's a ripple effect of uh, shame and you know just well shame shame we tend to live in shame you've got it right there shame free and we do. We're never good enough. We're never good enough, are we? We were just talking about that. Actually, we were talking about the book sales before this. And I was, you know, it's never good enough. I just want more and more. And and grace is, I'm telling you, grace is where it's at. And I agree with you, Tara. Grace is my new word. Grace is my new word. I think it absolutely, hands down, we don't give ourselves enough grace. Give yourself the grace that you would give me if I messed up or is it? No. And Nancy, up. Nancy says right here, we are our worst critics. Like why yes. did we, where did we get that? Right. Wow. This is great. I love what you are able to do on this. Is it, this, this is platform. fabulous. I love this program. Oh, Carrie. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's Absolutely. Good. 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 Yeah. Well, okay. What else? Anything else? I'll post these up here. Um, but she's a survivor, just like you ladies are, just like I am. We are survivors. We are warriors. We are children of God. We happen to believe in God and we are for sure children of God. We, in fact, we are the daughter of the most high king. Yes. Right? So yes. So be happy about it and step we into it. Don't Step into it. I'm a big believer in that. Step into it. And she overcame this. You ladies have overcome more than you will ever know. You, I mean, you've overcome so much and you are still here today. And my goal and Isabel's goal is to keep you here for the however many years, whenever our last breath is going to be. And it does not have to be a rocky road. And I'm a big believer in setting your boundaries. What do you think about that? Oh as my gosh. I had to learn. How, I didn't even know what a boundary was. Yeah. Me either. Excellent. I said yes to everything. Yeah. yeah. Yes and, to everything. Yes. The say, moon changes and it's a full or it's been a full moon here. The Well, everywhere, oh. I guess it's not a different moon in New Zealand. Um, no, it's, no, it's the same moon. Just so yes, you know. yes, that's what I said. I said, I, 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 that's what I was saying. I said, it's a full moon here. And then I said, oh, no, no, it's in New Zealand too. It's so, <laughs> Tennessee's got a full moon. I don't know what's going on in New Zealand, but I think we um, just had a full moon. But anyway, it's, it's all the yeah. same moon here on Earth. Yes, that's moon. right. That's right. Okay. And yes, Carrie, medications can cause other symptoms. Absolutely. Other and problems. Nancy, Nancy just wrote about um, parasites. Gosh, get your gut health, man. If you can get your gut health right. Um, that is so key. You and I are both big believers in getting our gut health right. You bet. Brenda Dixon, let me tell you about her. She is the psychotherapist extraordinaire in Middle Tennessee. And she's there's a lot to be said about speaking what you want to happen in your life. Amen. 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 Speak it Amen. out there. Speak it out there. You know, and so I mean, you can if you can speak it, you can do it. Absolutely. So every day, every day you are cultivating gratitude. You're working on your morning routine, your evening routine. I mean, you're putting one foot in front of the other. And that's what it is. And that's one of the things that helped me. My husband was like, babe, I mean, the, those five, that five year winter, my husband would say, I go, what do I have to do? What do I have to do today? And he'd go, babe, just one day at a time. I mean, he was my psych, psych psychiatrist pretty much, you know, just one day at a time. So that's why he's got so much information, so much wisdom mm, as a man, as somebody who walked alongside me in, in our group that he shares with people. He's not just a chef, 
He's also a man who who walked alongside a woman that was in a terrible, terrible place. And he Does didn't he have give a up on the brother. Like he's like 55 or something. I don't know, maybe 60. I'd take 60. No. Oh. He's he's an only he's an only child. Do you know how many women would oh love? God. I know I, I would love to clone him. I wish God would clone him. You know what? You never know what God's doing for you. getting ready for you, Danny. Oh, you never know. I, oh, you never don't give up hope, girlfriend. I know, I know. I'm going to speak it out there. He's got somebody for me out there. I don't know where he is, but I don't have to know. It'll happen when it happens, right? And he's handsome and kind and young at heart, and he's healthy and he's got great gut health, and he loves God and he's chasing down everything that God's got for him, and he's looking for a woman just like you. Oh my gosh. Okay. All right. Got it. Okay. That that's right. We got it. We'll see what happens. Danny. Oh, look. Yeah, you cracked me up. Well, there we go. Yes, I do have a little bit of a sense of humor, which you know what has helped get me through this life. And, oh, yeah. Um, you know, I could have gotten really triggered today. My mom called. Well, it said, you know, her assisted living on here. And every time I see it, I just get really anxious, PTSD like symptoms. Mm. And she goes, I said, Mom, what are you doing? She goes, having a nervous breakdown. And I said, What? And she's and she went off on me like she's not gone off in, on me in over a year, said horrible things to me today, mm. like two hours ago. And I mean, terrible things. And I bit mm. back a little bit. And then I thought, you know, I'm not doing this. And I and I'm not doing this. I, I accused me of stealing all of her money. I mean, all the things. And I thought, I've got too big of a week. I'm not letting this happen. And I got off the phone. I called the assisted living. I said, Mom, goodbye. And she goes, goodbye forever. Click. Which is not funny. But, you know, she has Alzheimer's. <laughs> and she has Alzheimer's. But but anyway, uh, I called the assisted living. I said, uh, you need to make sure she's got water. I don't know. Maybe she has a urinary tract infection. They said, oh, man, she's been mean as heck all day. She never yells at us. And so my daughter went over there to check on her. And Ella put me on speakerphone. Mom didn't know. Mom goes, you're just like her. You're just like Danny. You're just like yelling at my her granddaughter. Aww. Yeah. But, but all that being said, that could have triggered me back into all kinds of tailspin and it didn't. Today was the first day that I made, I mean, that I just, I, oh, I can't do anything about it. Right. Okay. So what did you say? What did you say to yourself? You know, what did you, what did you do? Let's, let's share with everybody what you Well, did. I just, I just said, I'm not dealing with this. I'm setting my boundaries. I said, goodbye, mom. <laughs> I'm not uh, going to listen to this. And I did say to her, I said, don't you ever speak to me like this again. Cause she told me I was stealing from her. I was doing all the things I said, I have darn near gone bankrupt trying to keep you over there and had to buy your house. And I said, you never speak to me like that again. And it was dead silence. Now she has Alzheimer's. So, but she's, she's not so far gone that she doesn't know how to use the phone and call me. So there's, there's a, there's connections. A there's connections happening you bet there are. And today she talked about the judge in Kentucky who took her rights away. Cause I have, I'm, I'm her conservator. I'm her guardian. So she was on fire today, but I'm telling you, I will sleep tonight because I'm not letting her destroy my health. She did for years yes, and I'm not Danny. going to let it happen. And, and I was a little snippy today as all of us could be. I mean, I've already asked for forgiveness on that one, but I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I saw her yesterday. She was as happy as a clam. Hugged me, kissed me, all the things. And so uh, what a great opportunity to reverse every word that your mom said. Yeah. Let's say that she's not getting into you. Yeah. And but that's I, not I your burden. And also realize that's not your burden. That's where, that's her story. That's and, right. That's and right. just... We cast our care. I know it's so easy for me to say that, but I know that you're that know that space that you're in. But we just, gosh, thank God we've got God. And we just go, God, take care of this, Dad. I can't do this. That's exactly right. And I'm not calling her back tonight. You know, I mean, I know she's safe and all of that. And those are boundaries, Tara. That's right. And I had set boundaries before with her. And then all heck broke loose. So things shift and things get fluid. And and I know that. And all of us have to set our boundaries. Every single person has to have boundaries. When you don't have boundaries, 
I'm a big believer that you, you teach people how to treat you. That's right. Absolutely. And you don't have to say yes to everything. And yes, Tara, grace and forgiveness. I've worked hard on that and you're not going to trigger me back into how I used to just spiral out of control and go to work all upset. How many of you all have gone to work mm. torn up every day over something? I'm not living like that anymore. I used to do that with my children. I'd argue with them. In fact, when I was married, we would be going to church with the kids and isn't that when you would fight like crazy all the way to church, like crazy. And then you get out of that car and you just go in and thank you, Jesus, Lord. Hello, sister. I mean, you know, it's like the biggest fake mess ever. And I'm not living like that anymore. No, and, and we don't have to. And, and that's, and that's your new story. That's your new story. That's the way you're That's your new life. That's exactly right. And, and we so, have, we have control of that. We are in control of this. You bet we are. Are we going to react or are we going to respond? Are we going to react and eat everything in sight and kick the dog and kick the water, the, you know, whatever, or, and spend every penny we've got on our credit card? Or are we going to be in control and just say, God, you got to help me. I that's can't right. do this. And that's what we have to do. You know, that was a blip in the road this afternoon. You, you, your life's not perfect. Nobody's life that's watching is perfect. And mm -hmm. you all can turn this around. Every single one of you've got to know you weren't born broken. You weren't born depressed. You weren't born with anxiety. You weren't born suicidal. We mm -hmm. turn that on through decades of dysfunction. And I'm just grateful that you're alive today. And I'm I am that. too. I am too. And remember, it's not taken care of in one day or one week or one That's month. Right. This this is work every day. I'm Danny and I are still working it. I, I I walk through the house sometimes and I go, God help me, God help me. And Michael hears me, he goes, What's the matter? What's the matter? And I go, I just need help all day long. I can't do this without him. And he's like, Oh, okay. <laughs> PTSD also, you know, he does. And, oh, Joyce, Joyce says, um, I can't show all of this, but part of it, it says, you know, I was in a very verbal abusive marriage, cussed every day, almost by a husband that was educated in psychology. Oh. Long story, but we got out alive. It was crippling because I loved him. We divorced five years ago. He passed away two months ago. Yes, we have God. I'm working through it now. My only son is 23 and is trying to get free as well. Yes, the grace is where I am. Oh, she's awesome like you, Danny. Thank you, ladies. Oh, oh, you, Joyce. Joyce. I'm beautiful. so grateful that you, you know, now here's the thing. And you may not believe this, Isabel. I believe that when you're in an abusive marriage, I mean, good for you for getting out. I, I'm sorry. I think God's more concerned with your heart right. than he is that marriage right there. And, you know, you have a lot of healing to do. I'm I'm certain. And now he's now he died. And, you know, that's probably a whole nother layer of of stress for you. And so I'm proud of you, sis. Keep keeping keeping on and keep working through it because there's a lot of layers there, especially with the 23 three year old son, you know, who had to witness that abuse. And that's all he knows. That's all he knows. And so I'm grateful he has you and he will learn. He will know that that's not what a marriage is about. I mean, we could talk about divorce and things forever, you know, and I was in a, in a tough marriage and anyway, so, you know, we all have a story, don't we? We all have a story, but anything else you want to say before we put this to bed over here and I share with them some things coming up. Uh, the only last thing, because, you know, I could talk about this forever. Me too. Me too. Because <laughs> we've got so much stuff that's happened that we're like, oh, my gosh, people need to know about this. The, the other thing is Joyce Meyer says this so well. She says, your future has no room for your past. What happened to you, an event that happened to you or events that happened to us, okay, that happened. Let's not stay stuck there. God's got so much more for us. And this is what kept me going is that I know that God's got more for me and I don't want to stay stuck. So just allow God to heal you. If you believe in God, um, allow God to heal you 
so that you can move on to your next best level, you know, because you've got a new story. We're, we, we create new stories the moment we wake up in the morning, you know, and so decide that you're not going to live that old, ugly story and just say, I'm in control. Today is going to be the best day of my life and something good's going to happen to me today and something good's going to happen through me. And guess what? You're speaking it out and it starts happening because you're believing I've got a brand new life in front of me. Amen to that. Amen to that. I think we're going to end on it. Your future has no room for your past. I don't know if I spelt her name right or not. I've seen her. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I've seen her three times live. And uh, wow. oh my goodness, let me tell you, she's the real deal. I love Joyce Meyer. So we're going to end it on that. Your yeah. room, I mean, your future has yes, no room, room for, for your, your past. past. You are not your past. You are not broken. You don't have to stay in the past. And Today's a new day and tomorrow's going to be a new day. And I am grateful that we are here and I am so grateful. This is my favorite time of year. So I love Thanksgiving. If you guys do not get my newsletter, you're going to want to sign up for it. DannyWilliamson.com. Go sign up for it because I'm going to put my gluten-free carrot cake in there tomorrow and my gluten-free um, dressing in there. So you're going to have that in the newsletter. And then it's going to tell you about all the things that are going on Black Friday and all of that. But um, what was I going to say? Oh, let's see here. No Sunday night service next week. But the week after that is um, Dr. Gandhi. And she is, you can follow her on Instagram, Dr. B-I-N-D-I, Bindi, no, Bindi, Y-A-M-D. Anyway, she's a leptin expert. L-E-P-T-I-N, leptin. Her entire career is on leptins and it's ah. fascinating. And leptin resistance and, um, you know, how that causes weight gain and things like that. So she's going to be talking about that. I'm very excited. I'll be listening. Hmm? Oh, good, good. I'll be good. listening. Hey, listen. <laughs> The book is doing great. Apparently, it's still number one on Amazon, but I got some bad news about Amazon. I did not realize that if you order more than two books on Amazon, it only counts as one for sales, for bestseller. So there's really no way to reach. They want our book orders to go off of Barnes and Noble. So if you guys are going to be buying any books going forward for presents, Christmas presents, go to Barnes and Noble online and order the books. I should have been doing that all along. That's what's going to get us in the bookstores. Barnes oh. and didn't know. And we sold thousands of books on Amazon. And so, but I had somebody who ordered 40 books for their business and they should have ordered them wholesale. Actually, it, it counts as one book. I know. I think two books. Yeah. Isn't that something? So anyway, that doesn't matter. Anyway, it's all what the things matter. we learned. What's going to happen is going to happen. It could <laughs> become a bestseller next year. But if you have corporate orders, if you have a business that buys more than 25 gifts for Christmas, email me and we will send you a link to buy the books at 40% off because, whoa, how much better is a wild and well book than a big old basket of toxic fruit or a big old tub of toxic pecans or whatever in there and peanuts in there. Give them the gift of wealth, you know? So, um, I mean, of health, not wealth. Well, what good is your wealth without your health? That's so there right. you go, right? Thank, thank <laughs> you, Brenda. Thank you, Brenda. That's Brenda's lovely. great. Yeah. So guys, listen, I am so proud of you. You all, we do our lives. I do a Facebook Live most every Sunday night, but because of the book launch, Elizabeth, we haven't had one for a couple of weeks, but we'll be getting back in track right after, well, in December going forward. So, um, yeah, I have so many different topics, Elizabeth. These are all transferred over to YouTube. I have hundreds of Facebook <laughs> lives on YouTube. I have a lot of words. So you guys um, get over there at YouTube, Danny Williamson Wellness, and you can learn about everything from electromagnetic fields to sex drive to Lyme disease, to Hashimoto's. I mean, it just goes on and on. So Dr. Isabel's got a fantastic website has got an incredible private Facebook group. I know how many people are on there right now. I expect every single one of you to go and ask to join her um, Facebook group community. It's community. It's They should call them communities instead of groups, you know? Yeah, well. I know. Okay. All right, my friend, I appreciate you. 
Thank you. Love you. We love Thank you, you so much. Let's move in next door to each other. Let's do it. <laughs> I can't, I can't move to New Zealand right now, but um, no, you can't. You've got a few things to do. All right. Look here. We're going to end it right here with this one. I'm a PTSD survivor. Survivor is key right yeah. there, Nancy. Prayers to others making their way. That's exactly right. Beautiful, Nancy. Perfect. Spot on. Spot on, on is right. We appreciate you guys and I will see you in two weeks. Uh, be watching our Instagram and Facebook because I got lots of videos coming up on on uh, Thanksgiving stuff. And I just started a clubhouse room also. Are you on clubhouse? No. Uh, we're going to talk about that. All right, okay. Elizabeth, we love you so much. I got my sweet potatoes you dropped off at the office, by the way. And that's what I'm making for Thanksgiving. I mean, those are the sweet potatoes that will be used for Thanksgiving.